Baldur's Gate 3 is finally out in 1.0, and if you're not playing it, you're kinda missing out. Especially when you think about this insanely deep co-op campaign experience. It's a little bit confusing to get into. So if you're unsure about how it works, I don't blame you. Let me explain to you how co-op works in Baldur's Gate 3. And definitely use those timestamps to get to the part that you need as there are a lot of different configurations for co-op that we tested and you might want to skip to whichever one pertains to you. Baldur's Gate 3 offers four player online co-op, two player split screen co-op, and a whole lot in between including combo co-op, all of which I'll touch later. First, let's start with online co-op. In order to play online co-op in Baldur's Gate 3, one of the players in your group needs to choose the multiplayer option in the main menu. Select create at the bottom of the screen to make a lobby, and then invite the friends. If you're playing with specific friends, be sure to keep your lobby private and not public. When the game starts, every player is going to have the opportunity to create a character or select an origin character. If your friends join later, they will be able to make a custom character but not play as a pre-made origin character, a point I'm going to come back to later. From here on out, the host has the ability to save, and when they do, they create a point where you can load back in later whenever you want to re-enter that campaign. When you re-enter, the host will assign everyone to their characters, or you'll get assigned automatically and you're just going to pick up right where you left off. If you do decide to add someone mid-campaign, they can create a character and join as I mentioned, sending any extra companions back to your camp. They'll also be able to level up their character to the host level so as to not be totally underpowered. However, that custom character will be stuck as a permanent slot in your campaign and cannot be replaced by a companion later on. So don't just go joining people's campaigns without committing to stick with it and checking with the host first. And I'm going to have to be sure to reiterate this point throughout. Every person you add to your player count post launch of the campaign, like going from 2 to 3 players or 3 to 4 players, takes away a potential slot for a companion. Finally, I do want to mention it is possible to switch hosts by sending the save file to a friend, but we're not going to cover the details of that here, you can find that elsewhere. Just know it's possible to do later if you're in a pinch. As for local co-op, you need to both be playing controller to access this feature. Instead of choosing a multiplayer game, just choose a new game, and once you're at the character creator, simply press X or A depending on your controller, and just like that you're in split screen. Anytime you come back to play in this campaign again, just simply activate your second controller and you'll be in split screen mode. Similar to online co-op, if you start a campaign alone and add a split screen co-op partner later, they will have to create a new character and not be able to choose an origin player. A friendly note to PC players, be sure to use DirectX 11 instead of Vulkan to launch the game if you're going to do split screen co-op because it does not work in Vulkan as of right now. During our testing, we were able to play in combo co-op, which is crazy. This means you can play with a friend in split screen while also playing with friends online. On top of that, you can actually double up and have two players playing split screen on one system while connecting online to two players playing split screen on another system. We're really happy to see this feature because it's not something you see very often in modern video games. With everything I mentioned above, you've probably figured out that there is no shared progression. It's best to look at it as the host has the save, and when you plan on playing in your co-op campaign, you're going to want to make sure that that host is available, or else you're just not going to be able to play. Let's say you have a party of three people and one person isn't available. You can still play without them and just reassign their character to someone else. Or if you have another friend who wants to join just temporarily, taking over that third person spot is fine. They won't actually have to make a custom character. It's only when you have four people in your three person campaign that the game realizes, okay, you need to make a custom character. So in summary, the host has the save and you can just join as long as they're available, but everybody else is not gonna have that progression saved to their game. Probably the craziest part of BG3's co-op is the player agency the non-host players have. Outside of saving, they can do anything they want, go anywhere they want, talk to any NPC they want. The non-host players truly have zero limitations in the campaign. One thing to keep in mind is you can listen into conversations your friends are having by clicking on the ear icon next to their portrait when they're in conversation. It's important to key in your friends when you're having a conversation that seems important because only occasionally will the game force you to watch a cutscene altogether. 
Additionally, you don't have to worry about loot drops, as your inventory can be shared between all four players pretty much whenever you want outside of combat. Finally, I want to note that if you have less than four players playing, you can bring the origin characters along in your party, we've kind of talked about that already, and you can also switch who controls that origin character whenever you want in the session menu. As far as we can tell, there is no difficulty scaling when you're playing with your friends. You choose a difficulty setting before you start your campaign, and that's going to be that. In some ways, co-op does make the game easier by allowing you to focus on less than four characters, but it also adds a lot of chaos, so that's just simply up to preference. Finally, there will be no cross-play between PC and PS5. Decide what system your squad will play on and stick to it. And that is everything you need to know before you get into Baldur's Gate 3's co-op. It's one of the most expansive co-op systems we've ever seen, and took a lot of testing to get everything down. If we helped you and your friends at all, show us some love in the comments or by liking the video and considering a sub. Please note that this is coming out before the launch of the PS5 version, but everything I mention here should apply all the same. Otherwise, I'm gonna peace out so I can keep playing this 100-hour behemoth with my friends, Catch you next time on another episode of The Co-op Bros.